What's going on everybody? Welcome to the fifth part of our SQ Lite mini series here. What we're going to be doing in this video is reading from the database. So now that we have the information there, how might we access that information? So we're going to go ahead and make a new function and we'll just kind of put it down here. I'm going to make some space and we'll put it here. So we're going to say define read from database. Now, the easiest way to do this would be just, I don't know, select everything. So let's say our SQL is going to be equal to select. So select is a SQL command. And then asterisk for asterisk just means all. Okay. Select all from example. Right. So this is going to select everything that exists in our table. Now, that's the SQL that we want to run, but how do we actually run it and then get the results? So the best way to do it would be something like this. You would say for row in c.execute, and then we execute that SQL. Easy enough. There was nothing dynamic here, so we can just straight up execute it. And then let's just print the row. Right. And then just to show you that we can actually use indexing, let's print row zero. OK, so save and run that. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's close this. We need to call this function instead of the other functions. So let's highlight, copy and then paste. And let's pull this stuff up here. So let's run that one last time and typo to execute. Execute. There we are. One more time. And there we go. We have the output. So this is the each row, and then we're referencing the zeroth element of each row, which was Python, Python, Python. And then this was all the data that we had, okay? So now, what if we wanted to, like, that's great, we requested that little bit of data, but what if we only want to find information where the user is a capital B beginner, okay, or a lowercase b beginner? What would we do? Well. What we can do now is instead of this being our SQL query, what we can say is select all from example, and then we can use the word where, and then we can specify some requirements. So we could say skill. So where skill is equal to, and let's say beginner. And for now, let's just print the row. We don't really want to print the zeroth element every time. And let's save and run that. So here we have those one row that contained where the skill was a lowercase b beginner. Now, how might we do it if we need the reading variable to be a dynamic thing? So, I mean, re looking at this as opposed to the other dynamic entry like we did here, how would we do it with for row and c.execute, like using the same syntax that we've been using? Well, what we could do instead is we could say first we could ask a question so we would say i don't know what skill are we looking for so we could use the input and then we could ask the question what skill level are we looking for okay and then we can pull this down so let's cut this and paste underneath what skill and now it will be select all from example where skill equals and then we just use the question mark easy enough. Now, the modification we have to make here is for row and c.execute SQL, and then comma, and then you would have a list with a tuple. And in that tuple would have all the elements. We just have one element. So that element, though, is what skill. So now let's save and run that. And now it's asking us what skill level are we looking for? We're going to look for a beginner. Hit enter. And sure enough, we found that capital B beginner. Awesome. What if we're looking for two values? OK, so what if we wanted to know what language to Right? We already know they're all Python, but what if we wanted to? So what language equals and then input? And then we will just ask that question, what language? And then we would say where skill equals question mark. And then we would say, and all caps, SQL, language equals, and again, question mark. Now we have in this list of, you know, 
in theory, kind of tuples, but not really. I mean, they're like parameters, I suppose. I don't know. We add one more, and then we're going to have in here, this will be what language? And then again, it'll print the row. So now let's save and run that. And what skill level are we looking for? Let's find the beginner again. And then what language? Python. And sure enough, it pulls that original row back for us. Now, what if we uh, wanted to restrict some sort of limits uh, to our data? So, for example, sometimes you might want to make a poll and you only want, maybe you're going to get back, you know, thousands and thousands of rows, but maybe you only want like five. And a more popular use of limit is not necessarily when we're doing selects, but it's actually when we're doing updates or deletes. So people will use it for updating and deleting because uh, you putting a limit there, like if you expect something to only take or affect, say, a thousand rows, you would put the limit as maybe a thousand and five, okay? But that way, maybe you thought it was only supposed, like you wrote it, where it should have only affected a thousand rows, but what if it affects like five million rows? Well, in SQL, there is no undo statement, so everything you do is pretty much permanent. So it's important to have limit and limit whenever you're using it, but also you can also utilize select before you run the delete query. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. We'll talk about limit, update, and delete in the next one. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.